Hi, I'm Jane Paul Wilson. Um, I'm standing as a candidate to represent Middle in the general election. Uh, just to introduce myself and give a little bit of my background, uh, I was born and raised on the Isle of Man. Professionally, I qualified as a solicitor and uh, specialised in employment law, working in the City of London in private practice and then in-house at UBS Investment Bank. On returning to the island in 2005, I then had a role providing um, employment law and HR consultancy to a range of multinational businesses. I have been in the Legislative Council since May 2017 and I've taken on a variety of government and parliamentary roles. Thank you very much for your questions. Um, turning to the first question around suitably qualified and experienced staff, I believe that uh, getting this right involves a partnership between government and uh, businesses. I think it's important that we offer not only our young people, but people who may wish to retrain um, the opportunity to reskill. And I think better anticipation of the skills we need and also an ability to meet areas of recognised need uh, could be achieved if we have that closer partnership working. Uh, by way of example, a current role I have is Equality Champion, and in that guise, I am chairing a childcare strategy working group. The working group has representation from government, from the Department for Enterprise, Department of Education, and the Registration and Inspection Unit, but it also has representation from the Chamber of Commerce Legislative Group and representatives from the childcare sector. And the working group working together has been able to flush out and discuss a number of issues and then start work on some practical ideas of how to address those issues. And the things that we are particularly focusing on are better promotion of the sector and the career opportunities within it. Also better training and making sure that the opportunities and the way in which training is delivered fits with the um, sector need and also looking at how to reduce bureaucracy and offer better support so that people who may be thinking of coming into the sector, in particular childminders, have a better uh, understanding and, and are more able to uh, set up. Um, so I would support that type of working group model where people can come together, understand the issues and then work together to take practical steps to address them. In terms of your question about regulatory burden being proportionate, fair and understood, again, I think this is very much about engagement. Um, I think it's incumbent uh, on legislators, whether they're in the House of Keys or the Legislative Council, to listen to and talk to people who have relevant expertise and those who are going to be affected by any legislation or regulation. An example from my own recent experience was engaging with uh, a local advocate in respect of some aspects of our competition bill. Um, and I would support engagement on different levels because I think depending on the issues, you can have one-to-one uh, -one discussions or you could have much more uh, comprehensive working group input at the stage of uh, devising policy and writing legislation. But I think that engagement is important. Um, your questions around listening to businesses, supporting innovation and planning for the longer term, this is key, I think. And I also think, though, that we have a really good opportunity to try and get this right in the context of the ongoing KPMG, KPMG strategic review into our economic future. Um, there is obviously a lot of opportunity to input into that, but I think what will be critical is as that review uh, brings ideas to the fore, then as we plot our way forward, continuing uh, that engagement and thinking longer term to position ourselves well for the future. Again, I think um, the ways in which that engagement are done, uh, I wouldn't say there's a one size fits, fits all, but it is clear to me that meaningful discussion and dialogue between politicians and officers with relevant businesses is critical if there's going to be a good understanding of not only the challenges but the opportunities and how best we can harness those. Support for COVID-19 uh, recovery I think will continue to be important for those sectors most impacted. I think government um, has to retain an approach which is listening, 
which is also dynamic and able to be flexible to respond to the challenges uh, that sectors may face. I think it's also important, though, that that support is targeted as far as we can to making sure it addresses the impact from the the pandemic and does not otherwise distort the market. In terms of new opportunities uh, for trade from Brexit, it's my understanding that some of our best opportunities would arise by aligning ourselves well with the work the UK is doing to uh, progress its own trade deals. I think from my observation, there has been some uh, very good close working between local politicians and local officers with UK counterparts. I would support that continuing I would also support that there is, again, high levels of engagement with our local businesses so that the opportunities and issues are well understood um, as dialogue progresses between the island and the UK. Regarding the questions you've raised around climate change, I think this is really, really important for our future direction. Um, I think the next administration must address the transition of our future energy supply And it seems to me that that can be done in a way that not only um, increases our own energy security and stability for the future, but also maximises our economic um, opportunities and the potential for new revenue streams. I think there is also an opportunity for the island to position itself well by articulating a vision of a clean and green island, something that I think could definitely enthuse and retain existing businesses, but also be a significant factor in attracting new inward investment and economically active people to live and work here. A diverse economy, I think, is going to be important for our future. Um, We must try and retain and uh, look after our existing sectors whilst developing in new sectors, particularly in the digital and green space. In terms of attracting and retaining people, um, I think that uh, involves a number of factors. I think we have to have a holistic approach. Looking at a paper from 2018 about meeting our population challenges, one of the areas of feedback was a lack of awareness uh, particularly and perhaps among some of our young people who have gone away to uh, further education about the extent of the career opportunities on the island. So I think doing more to increase understanding and promote awareness of those opportunities, particularly in the digital and tech areas, would be important. To the extent that incentives might uh, encourage some of our young people to return here and make their careers here, I think we should look at that. I think more broadly, um, we should be imaginative. Uh, So Manx Care, I know, is looking at how we could create joint working opportunities so that people who uh, believe their career opportunities and specialisms exist off the island might be able to find a way of living and working here whilst retaining a link to uh, a specialist centre in the UK or elsewhere to help support their ongoing development and future career progression. More broadly, I think we need to look at uh, the issue of housing availability and affordability. I would like to see a coherent housing policy that picks that up, that looks at our existing help to buy schemes. Um, And I also think it's important that the Manx Development Corporation succeeds by driving high quality development on our brownfield sites. This would, I believe, give more choice around high quality living accommodation and also revitalise our urban centres, particularly Douglas, which, again, I think would make a big difference uh, to our attractiveness uh, to economically active people to live and work here. Finally, I think a vision of a green, clean biosphere island could be a significant pull factor. Thanks very much for listening.